Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about mirrors and lenses. And this will be, I'm going to break this up in a couple different videos. This will be part one. And this is just going to be um, just basic definition, definitional things, and um, flat surfaces. So um, that will be um, plane mirrors and um, uh, just, I guess, flat piece of glass. Flat glass. Um, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so first I, I kind of want to make it clear that for the, all this kind of stuff, we're not going to really get into the derivations at all. This is going to be a very kind of workman-like type of situation where I'm going to show you how to use the equations and what the results are um, as far as why certain things happen, I'll kind of point out along the way that that you kind of just have to memorize it. It's not worth getting into why it's true. Um, so that's why I kind of picked this as a good topic to do on the video so that that way, um, you know, if you guys would jump in and ask questions about, well, why is this? I would probably just tell you we're not going to worry about it. So... Um, it's kind of a good topic for that. So, <clears throat> first I kind of pre-drew this thing. What this is supposed to represent, this thing in the middle here is an object. I just drew it as a blob because I'm not really being that artistic. And the reason why we can see an object um, is because light is coming off of it and diverging in all directions. So, um, if this object has its own light source, the light will go out in all directions, or if it's just a regular old object that's sitting in the room, it reflects light off in all directions, and that's why we can see it. And um, this divergence is kind of uh, important for understanding how we see the light, because if you could imagine, let's say, a certain area here, and this area is really close by to the object, um, what you can see is that the light that intersects with this area is what I'll call quite divergent. So it's catching all of these light beams and it's uh, sp um, quite spread out at this point. Now if I just move this area over here and I try to transpose it as closely as I can right there, I'm just trying to make it exactly the same size, um, you can see that it doesn't catch nearly the variety of light beams. For instance, it might catch this one and this one, and maybe that one. Let's just, for the sake of argument, say that it caught that one. Um, but the point being is that this very divergent light beam has already shot way up here, way above this area. It has not been caught by that area. And same thing with this one. This one was caught by the area when it was nearby, but now it's way down here. It's not even close to put passing through here. So the point I'm trying to make here is that when you're observing light from a near object, um, you get light that kind of looks like this. It's very divergent. Whereas when the object is uh, further away, further away object, the light is actually much more close to being kind of all in the same direction, basically because the light beams that were more like this or more like this, they've at this point they've shot far above and below the object and they just haven't been they're not going to register at your location because they don't get to you. And the extreme of this is when you have an object which is infinitely far away. Now, nothing can truly be infinitely far away, but in our approximation, basically, the light beams are very, very close to be coming uh, to you parallel. And that's because if there's even a slight uh, degree difference, then you wouldn't have caught those things because they're going to miss you. So. Um, this right here is going to be important as we go through the various cases, mirrors and lenses and all this stuff. And um, we basically, um, this is the kind of light we get from a near object. This is what we get when it's further away. And this is our, the furthest object that we theorize could be possible. The light will come out parallel. Okay, so with that in mind, um, let's start. Um, now, by the way, I have posted a packet for you. Um, the packet kind of outlines more or less what I'm going to talk about in writing, and so you can use that. Um, I've actually, some of the stuff that I've just talked about is on the, 
the top of the second page. But uh, I'm going to be doubling back to the, um, the first page. And we'll talk about the simplest kind of mirror. It's called a plain mirror. It's just like you have in your bathroom. And uh, it's just completely flat. You can draw it like this. And uh, let's put an object in front of it. Again, I'm not being very artistic right now, so this my object is just going to be a blob like that. And uh, let's take a look at some of those light rays that are coming off of it. I'll just draw a sampling here. Draw some that actually head toward the mirror, because otherwise the mirror can't do anything with them. Um, and so here, uh, let's figure out what happens. Now the operating principle for a plane mirror, or in fact all mirrors, is reflection. So um, that's the operating principle of a mirror. And so we know the law of reflection is just that things reflect at equal angles, right? Whatever the incident angle, the reflected angle is the same. So we'll go ahead and drop our normals in here, like so. And then, um, not that the light changes color, but just to make it a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to just tra um, draw the, the beam that comes out in a different color. Um, so equal angles. So these are equal angles right here. That's the law of reflection. And over here, like so, equal angles. And this one, you can see why I just picked a different color to draw the outgoing beam, because this basically comes in at zero, so it's going to go out at zero, and it goes like that. So we have, um, in black, we have the incoming beams. Um, so in black, that's incoming beams. And in orange, we have the outgoing beams. So that's basically the reflected light. And so um, let's see how we'd perceive this uh, outgoing light. Um, now I haven't drawn all of them, but basically if you're over here, in addition, of course, you're gonna get some light that comes directly from the object, but that's not really interesting. That's why we see the object. But what we're interested in is um, how do we perceive these outgoing beams, the, the uh, beams that uh, bounced off the mirror. And um, here again we appeal to the idea that your eye is basically um, silly and just assumes that whatever beams come at it uh, are coming directly from the source. So um, let me trace these back. Um, now everything is going to be, let's see, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'll trace this back. I'll trace this one back. And I'll trace the, this orange one back again. And what we get is that our eye is going to think that there's something right there. Um, and this is called the image. This is the image that's made by the plane mirror. So this is the actual object. And this is an image of the object. Um, and again, the reason why you think there's something here is because if you're watching these outgoing light beams, um, you basically, um, you, you just can't tell that they aren't coming straight from here. <clears throat> um, so let's talk about the properties of this image. Um, uh, let's see, a couple of different things. First of all, um, we can talk about its uh, magnification. So magnification is basically um, gives you the ratio of how tall is the image appear to be versus how tall is the object actually. So this is the object height and sorry the image height. This is the object height. Um, you can see that it's a um, unitless parameter. For instance, if the magnification is um, one then you have that the image and object are the same height. Whereas if the magnification, say, is 2, then the image appears twice as much, twice as tall as the object. Um, I guess I can label these. This would be y sub o, height of the object. This would be y sub i. Um, that's the height of the image. And if you have looked at a bathroom mirror, uh, you probably know that the magnification is 1. You don't see yourself as gigantic or tiny. You see yourself pretty much exactly the same size that you are. Um, and that's uh, the case for a plane mirror. Um, we'll see later on when we do more complicated types of mirrors and lenses that um, different things can happen that would make the magnification different. Um, 
And uh, what else? Um, we can also talk about the distance. So we can, uh, let me pick a different color here just so you can tell as I'm adding more and more here. Um, this here we call the object distance. It's so it's how far you your object is in front of the mirror. Uh, and then this here is the image distance. So that's how far the image appears to be from the mirror. Um, now, first of all, um, I should mention that many people have the misconception that the image is actually on the mirror. So it's 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 here. It's not back here. Um, our eyes are so good at adjusting that we often don't even realize that it's doing that. Uh, if you want proof that your eye is actually fixated on a point back here and focused on a point back here and not actually on the mirror, um, what you can do is you can put a little sticky note or something like that, write a little something on it, um, put it right on your mirror, and you will see that you cannot simultaneously focus on that and read the text there and also see this clearly because they're actually not in the same place. Your eye will adjust it's looking back here. So if you are, say, one meter in front of your mirror, your evil twin back here is one meter behind the mirror. So um, uh, that, uh, um, and, and that's because ba basically this distance here and this distance here are exactly the same. Uh, so when the light bounces here, Everything is faithfully kept, all the, your perceptions of distance, it's just that instead of appearing to be here, it's here, okay? Um, so, now you might say, okay, well, can we just say this then? Can we say they're equal? By the way, my drawing is not great, but this distance is supposed to be this. Uh, um, however, we cannot say this because there's some sign conventions that come along with this stuff. In fact, a lot of what this stuff is about is kind of managing your sign conventions. Um, so the first thing you need to know, the object distance for us will always be positive. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, but the image distance can be plus or minus uh, depending on um, a couple different things. Uh, I should say one thing, the, uh, what we tie it to is the outgoing light beam. So these light beams are um, orange. Those are the outgoing light beams. They've been reflected at this point and they're on their way out. Now, if the image happens to be over on the same side as the outgoing light, we would call the image distance positive. So if the image was over here, we'd call that image distance positive. Um, however, of course, in this case, it's not. So over here, we're on the opposite side as the outgoing light. So in fact, here we call any images that are over here, they're negative. They have a negative image distance. Now, again, if you ask why would you do that, don't worry about it. The whole idea of this is that we want to have some sign conventions that allow us to treat a wide variety of mirrors and lenses all kind of inclusively. And so we'll find that this is really helpful. So we don't have this, we have this. So in this case, let's say I'm standing uh, three meters in front of the mirror and my evil twin is three meters behind the mirror um, so that would be negative negative. and so I notice that the relationship between them is that um, they're the same to within a sign so we need an extra sign for that um, and so basically di can be plus or minus it's plus if you're on the same side as the outgoing light and I spelled outgoing wrong here um, and then minus if it's on the opposite side as the outgoing light so it's tied to the outgoing light um, so some other things um, uh, let's let's try to get the sign conventions out of the way so that um, we kinda understand them for when we get more complicated um, the magnification, there's a little bit more to it than just uh, the number. It turns out the magnification also has a sign. It can be plus or minus. Um, so a plus is when you have an image that is the same orientation as the object. So a plus, that's called an upright image. 
Now I've just drawn my object and image as kind of blob so you can't tell, but if you've you know ever used a um, plane mirror, you know that your evil twin here is the same orientation. It's not like uh, you know you're staring face to face with your evil twin. It's not like you're staring at their feet. It's not flipped upside down. Um, we'll see that there's um, uses again, not right now, but later on. Uh, when the magnification is negative, it tells you that it's inverted, which means that the image is flips up, flipped upside down. Um, so it's important to not only t talk about what's the number, I guess since these can be negative, I'll put uh, absolute values. Um, the absolute value will tell us just if the object is bigger or smaller than the image, and then the sign has meaning too. So, uh, in summary, here's what we have for the plane mirror. We have that the magnification is positive, that indicates that the image is upright um, and the image distance is negative and finally this is what's something that's called a virtual image so I'll talk about that in just a second but these things right here always go together okay this is true for any single mirror or lens so what I mean by single is that when we start to have, you know, more than one mirror or more than one lens in a row, that's that's a different story. But if you have a single mirror or lens, these things always imply each other. Um, so this is, I'll call this my circle of fun for, um, it, we'll find that there's two of these. When we reverse all these conditions, that also, those also all imply each other. Um, I, sh I should mention what a virtual image is. Uh, a virtual image is one in which light appears to be emanating from a point, like let's say this point, but it's not really actually coming from there. So you can see that it looks like light is emanating from there, but it's really a trick of the eye. It looks like it's emanating from there because it's been reflected to make it look like that, but there is n really no light actually coming from here. Um, so that's going to have some important implications if we want to try to say capture an image on film. Um, you can't capture virtual images on film um, and the reason why is because um, for instance if you're staring, sitting there in front of your bathroom mirror if you were to go in, behind the mirror into the next room and put a piece of film here of course there's nothing coming from there this could, you know you're in here in the bathroom and there's a dark room over here there's nothing actually going on here it just looks like it's coming from there but it's really not so um, the, this is a virtual type of image and um, that's to distinguish it from the opposite which is a real image um, and again that's we don't get one of those from a plane mirror because um, you can't get one with a plane mirror but I just want to kind of give you a sense of what are the opposites um, what are the things that we we're encounter later so right now we have an upright image it's right side up it's virtual, no light is actually coming from the image point, it just looks like it is. Um, the image distance is negative, and what else? Um, yeah, right, so magnification of positive, um, that it implies that it's upright, that's upright encoded mathematically is a positive magnification. So um, these things all imply each other, and um, we'll find that as we go into more complex things, it's nice because if we know any one of these things, we know all the rest. It's true for any single mirror lens, no matter what type. As far as plane mirrors go, um, you don't have to have just a special um, mirror that you buy from the store. The only thing that really is important is that it's very smooth. And so that way the normals are kind of coordinated. The normals are kind of lined up. You can count on them being like this the whole way. Um, if, for instance, um, let's see, I grab a different piece of paper. Um, so I'll use this one again. Um, if your surface on a microscopic level looked like this, then if light came in, then who knows what kind of normal it is. So the normal might here be like this, but the normal might here might be like this, and the normal here might be like this, and then who knows what you get. So uh, it just requires it being smooth enough so that um, you can get expect that there's kind of a, a coordinated um, a kind of coordinated aspect to how these light beams are being treated and that's when you start to get a, a clear image. Um, 
So that's plain mirror behavior, and I'm going to refer to plain mirror behavior because it turns out that um, when you're talking about other mirrors and lenses, uh, they often, in some limit or another, uh, um, kind of look like this. So um, even more comp complicated mirrors in certain limits look like a plain mirror. So um, that's that one. And uh, while I'm at it, uh, let me talk about a pane of glass behavior. Um, this one is actually not in the packet, which it should be, but it's basically I want to equivalently see instead of a mirror what it looks like if we just have a flat piece of glass. So uh, let me draw a flat piece of glass here. And again, I'll put an object in front of it, like so. This is my object and uh, draw some representative light beams coming in. This is the incoming beams, just a sampling. And the operating principle for a uh, um, pane of glass, or as we'll start to curve them, there'll be lenses, is uh, refraction. So um, we have to figure out what exactly happens here. So let me zoom in and figure out how this light beam interacts. Um, I guess I'll do that up here. So here is the uh, pane of glass much thicker. So this is the glass, this is air, this is air, and uh, let's draw this light beam coming in. So let's check it out. We'll drop the normal here. Uh, now we know that light bends toward the normal when it comes in, so I'll draw it a little bit toward the normal. So this bent toward the normal a little bit, like that. I guess I can draw that because I don't think it's actually that clear. Um, my drawing is not that good. And once it bends toward the normal, it'll bend away from the normal again in pretty much the same amount. So, you know, the refraction in toward the normal, the refraction on the way out, it's going to basically uh, come out at the same angle. So this angle right here and this angle right here are the same. So basically the refraction just reverses itself. Now, there is a slight difference. Um, this caused a slight offset, if I can try to draw this. If I trace this back exactly, well, we'll find that this is uh, parallel to, but not exactly um, the same as the incoming beam. So um, the important thing here to realize is that the angle is the same. So the other thing to realize is that if this glass is very thin, then this offset will be very little. So what we're going to approximate is that this is very, very narrow, um, and then this is very, very small. And so effectively, what we're going to be taking a look at is what we're going to call thin lenses. And so this offset factor is very tiny. In fact, I'm going to not even bother to draw it in here. I'm going to basically say that it goes straight through. So effectively, this is what happens. Um, so what would we do? I guess that I, I did it in orange on the other one, so I might as well do it over here. Orange is the outgoing. So orange is after you've interacted with whatever you're going to interact with. So um, here we have the incoming side, light coming in, and the outgoing side. So, um, here's, let's, let's see what we, what we would see over here, if we were observing this. Uh, well, our eye would trace these outgoing beams back, and they'd pretty much be right here. So, your image, uh, I think I did that in blue on the other side. So, basically, you would trace them back pretty much exactly where... Uh, they were really coming from. So when you're looking through a pane of glass, the object and the image are pretty much the same. So you probably know this if you're looking out the window and you see a bird that's one meter outside the window, that bird really is one meter outside the window. So there's no optical trick here. The uh, actual object location and the image location are exactly the same. So that's pane of glass behavior is what I'll call that. Um, we can actually use the si same sign conventions for this. 
Um, remember before we, we tied it to the outgoing light. So um, now that the light is just passing through because the operating principle is refraction instead of reflection where it's bouncing off. So I'm going to call this again di is plus. Okay, so I guess let me refer to this over here. Um, so over here, the light bounced off. So I the outgoing light, I call that di is plus. And then the other side, not the outgoing side, that's di is minus. So same thing over here. So the outgoing side is always di is plus. But again, that's not where our image is. It's over here. So our image is over here. So our di is once again negative. And once again, we have do is minus di. Um, so the object distance is always positive. In this case, the image distance is on the opposite side of the outgoing light, so it's negative, and of course we need that extra minus to make it all work. Now what you notice here is that we came up with the same exact thing. We came up with the same exact thing as for the plane mirror, and that's on purpose. It's, it's nice to, dis to tie everything to the outgoing light side. So the outgoing light side could be the same as the incoming. So in this case, the light bounces off. Everything over here is the outgoing light side, whereas that's because reflection is how a mirror works, whereas over here, the outgoing light side is the opposite side passing through because, of course, the operating principle in a pane of glass is that light actually passes through. So um, we tie this. If we tie the outgoing light side, then we can kind of treat mirrors and lenses on the, s the same footing. <clears throat> um, so once again, um, we have what? We have that the uh, image is the same orientation as the object. It's upright. When you look through a window at a bird, the bird is not upside down. Um, we have that it is a, um, we also would call this a virtual image. Now that's, again, a bit silly because light is really coming from here, but that's because the plane, pane of glass behavior is, um, this is kind of a weird generic case, so we won't worry about that. Um, what else? Um, DI is negative, and um, what else? Yeah, that's it. So these are the four things. Notice it's the same thing as the circle of fun over here. Um, so that's basically your result for the um, uh, plane mirror and pane of glass. So you can see that because we tie everything to the outgoing light side, whether the light beam is uh, refracted or reflected, it allows us to basically treat these as, as the same. So uh, we have the same results. Um, so for both of the pane of glass and the plane mirror, we have that the magnification is plus one. Uh, the, the plus again means it's upright. The one means that the object height and the image height are the same. Um, I guess it's that tells me it's upright again. Uh, DO is minus DI, and that's about it. So um, those are the simplest types of systems. This is basically a plane mirror. This is the most unexciting mirror. This is the pane of glass, which is the mo most unexciting lens. And that'll set us up for the more complicated type things. And at this point, we can already see, kind of get a sense of the sign convention. So we have a sign convention for the magnification, and we have a sign convention for the uh, image distance. Um, and that should do it. So I'm going to put into a separate video, um, we'll do the concave mirrors and convex mirrors. Um, and then we'll put the converging lens and uh, diverging lens into um, their own video set. Okay.